Hello and welcome back to the Rose Wall coverage. I'm Journey Wadehack with Lynn Fairley. We just finished watching the Santa Barbara International Film Festival's Outstanding Performer of the Year Award. Uh, it's an online ceremony this time, and they were giving the award to Sasha Baron Cohen, who has quite a prolific career at this point, and most recently he's up for Oscars for two movies that came out uh, late last year, Borat's subsequent movie film, the sequel to the classic Borat, and uh, The Trial of the Chicago Seven. And it was a very fascinating interview, and he's such a fun guy to watch. And um, Yes, he was in his home in Australia and waving hello to his mother in London, and just very casual and just very available. And at one point I was wondering if we were going to get Sasha Baron Cohen, if we were going to get any number of his characters actually speak to us. And he said, my least favorite character is my own voice. Yeah, I think my least popular character, least Sasha popular. Baron Cohen, yes. yes. Yes, that was fun. And it was nice to see with all of these interviews, people um, in their homes, maybe in a little bit more of a comfortable environment from uh, over the years, what we've seen with uh, the hustle and bustle of the red carpet. Well, and yeah, and that's that. an understatement because yeah. we usually just have two, three, up to maybe five or six minutes and they're in a rush and we are too and it's crowded and yeah. we get to instead sit in this comfortable room and they in their homes and from all over the world, we, we get to see them. Now, Sasha Baron Cohen is a writer, producer, and actor, and he was asked by the moderator, who uh, was Scott Feinberg of mm -hmm. Variety, um, just what was his background? What, where did he start, and how did he um, become schooled? And Journey's gonna tell us about that. Sure. Um, so he was born and raised in the UK, as I understand it, and his parents had immigrated there. Um, his parents and his family had, had fled uh, Nazi Germany uh, in the mid-30s, and um, that was uh, that Jewish identity and that background of genocide was a huge uh, influence on, on his comedy in, a, in an interesting way. Um, he, had a, he went to Cambridge University and studied history to perhaps steep himself more in, in the context of what had happened. And he uh, has mentioned in interviews before being very influenced or having one of his um, philosophies really summarized by a quote from a prominent historian of that, that era that essentially goes, the path to Auschwitz is paved with indifference. And, um, and so you'll see in, in a lot of his characters, he is exposing um, people's bigotry and, and perhaps more so people's indifference to uh, the bigoted characters or the ignorant characters that he'll sometimes play and bring out in the people, the unsuspecting people that he talks to in those films. I also like the fact that he, he gave a lot of credit to his father who would um, remind him of that quote. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of having his sons uh, Sasha Baron Cohen has older sons, pretty prominent in music, by brothers, the way. Brothers, older brothers, yeah. Brothers, who are musicians in their own right, really well known, particularly in Europe, um, that it was important for them to try and be the funniest person in the room, um, but with, with a rich sense of where they came from, and that the fact that this quote meant that they couldn't be bystanders in the world, that the greed and the ills of society is what they really needed to address if they're gonna go out in the world and be anyone. And you know, I'm married to a Jewish man and that is a through line. And we have many, many friends and that through line of being someone in the world that can promote, um, pr promote this idea of, of bigotry and greed and indifference uh, against other people, other religions, particularly Jewish, is something in their bones. It's something in their cellular level because all of our friends, particularly the men, are really on that same path hmm. to fight against these injustices. And we'll get to that in a minute too because that's kind of the background of the Chicago, the trial of Chicago 7. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Scott Bynes, uh, Feinberg, the moderator of this award, was also bringing up that he felt that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen understands the power of humor and comedy to expose the ills of society and to humble the powerful. Hmm. And I, that was one of the best quotes of that whole interview. 
because that is what he's done with his entire career, as you were saying before, that we see this throughout all of his movie making. Absolutely. So let's get back to some of his earlier work. Uh, it was this LAG character, he, we found out, he created that in uh, the UK way before it came to America. And way before it hit TV in the UK even, too. It, yeah. You see that he was telling us the... Um, the sort of genesis of, of some of that character. And it might have, I'm not sure, it might have been mixed a little bit with early Borat as well, as he was experimenting with this whole form of, uh, of being a, uh, taking on a false persona and not having other people around him in the know and kind of seeing what would happen. And be able to then, then express this message uh, and have people laughing until they found out they'd been pranked in many cases, but still able to make his point as he has done once again in the Borat subsequent movie. Um, so let's go from Ali G to uh, the original Borat in Bruno, which you know better than I. Uh, What's the difference between those two characters? Oh, well, Ali G, I believe, is um, something of a, uh, a British, um, gosh, I don't know what the word would be, but he's he's a he's a guy who maybe in the in the U.S. we would say kind of thinks he's a thug in some ways oh. and, and kind of <laughs> you know has that attitude, but he he doesn't necessarily have the um, the uh, toughness to back it up um, at all. Yeah, yeah, and so he he can be a, a very funny character to have um, basically just be um, really dumb in interviews um, as opposed to maybe. Uh, well, they all have, you know, a thread of, of being dumb and silly in interviews, but uh, Borat, for example, I think you get to see a little bit more of uh, a bigoted side come out, mm. um, misogynistic, anti-Semitic, etc., um, that he, he uses to pull that out and make uh, people around him comfortable. Or uh, uncomfortable, as it were. That too, that yeah. too. But in, in terms of uh, voicing um, uh, ignorant views and bigoted views, mm -hmm. he, he uh, gets people to let their guard down in a really interesting way. Really genius way. And then with Bruno, that character is um, addressing more of homophobia, I think. That's probably the main, the main point as a, as a gay Austrian fashionista. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but he also, you know, manages to bring out, um, uh, it seems like every film has a, a cross-section of, of different kinds of social ills that he's trying to address, as well as just make people laugh and, frankly, make us a little uncomfortable, too, uh, which is, you know, part of the fun of it and the nature of that humor. And he's only 49 years old, and, and it's kind of interesting to see and wonder what's next. I mean, what he's done here with um, Borat, the subsequent movie, and by the way, that now holds the Guinness Book of Records as the lo longest movie title ever, and, cause, and that's because it goes on and on and on and on. Look it up. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, he managed, actually, to really influence the last election uh, of the then-President Trump against uh, his running mate, not, yes, Biden. His, his rival Biden. His rival yeah. Biden. Um, by getting... Amazon to release Borat, the subsequent movie, the same day, much earlier though in the UK because they're ahead of us, uh, as our presidential debate, the very same day. And if you haven't seen it, there is a part in the movie where Rudy Giuliani is pranked badly, mm -hmm. big time, by Maria Bakalova, who by the way is on her way to Hollywood for possibly an Oscar as his um, supporting actress. Another really amazing story. Uh, we covered her in the um, uh, Variety Awards a couple days ago, if you want to look at that and find out a little bit more about um, Maria Bakalova. So Rudy Giuliani was ready to go to that debate with a hard drive of evidence against the Biden family and crimes but didn't do it because the headlines in the news and all over social media was this prank, mm -hmm. this visual prank that was pulled on Rudy Giuliani and he had more than just his pants down. Let me just leave it at that. You see the movie and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So here is Sasha Baron Cohen once again really making a giant impact. He's a British guy sitting in the UK worried about our election worried about the ills of society, truly, truly, desperately uh, 
horrified by, by the idea that President Trump would be reelected and decided to, to do this movie, Borat, so bring Borat back as a journalist, kind of a conspiracy theory journalist, and then make an impact on this election because he said if even one person, one, one person went out to vote because of this, then I feel like I haven't been a bystander. Mm -hmm. And that was certainly something that came up throughout the interview was uh, that he didn't want to be a bystander. Mm -hmm. He kept saying that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you really see it in his own unique way that, um, that whether it's Who is America or his characters in Bruno and in Borat and so forth, he's, um, he's trying to do his part as an artist to um, help society get a little better. Very much so. That brings us to the trial of the Chicago 7, for which the entire ensemble has already won quite a few awards, but also up for an Oscar. Sasha Baron Cohen stars as Abby Hoffman in this movie, who was very, very much involved in the civil rights of the 60s. Now, this was important to Sasha Baron Cohen, who waited to do this movie for 14 years, because his very own thesis at Cambridge University had a really interesting, he had a really interesting idea then. He decided to come to America to study the civil rights movement. Didn't you think that was an amazing thesis? Absolutely, yeah. What I gathered from it was that uh, he was interested in Jewish participation in the civil rights movement and um, the allegiance that took place there, um, or so he thought. And then later in, in his interview with Scott Feinberg, he was talking about how he couldn't really call it an allegiance because they weren't aware of each other. Uh, uh, the black people in the civil rights movement at that time were seeing white faces and to some degree coming to help with the protests and so forth, but there was not an awareness that a great many of those white faces were Jewish people. Exactly, and, and he was astonished by this. So he went back to the UK and said, well, I was wrong. <laughs> and he had to redo his thesis. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. He seems like a, a very, not just talented, but really well-educated person. That's what I like about this, that he has this background that he's Jewish, that where his parents came from, that his parents decided to handle everything with humor as a coping skill, perhaps, that he has a history degree. And, and by the way, in the UK, there's no such thing as a minor. You master your degree. Mm -hmm. And then he takes that, he has a whole bunch of really odd jobs he tells us about, and then he starts to create the pre-LEG uh, character as a young man, um, went in and out of a bunch of different shows that didn't click really, and then finally he hit on Borat. Mm -hmm. And crashed onto the scene with that. I, yeah. I still remember when that came out, what a big deal it was. And um, yeah, he... He got himself in plenty of trouble with that and, and entertained millions of people with it and seemed to take a break from some of his character acting for a while, or shall I say the characters that he had created, and then did more dramatic work uh, for an interim period. He worked with Martin Scorsese and so forth. And then I think around the time of the 2016 election, he was feeling um, very unsettled by the politics that were emerging. And uh, I think enough time had passed that he started playing with, um, with some new characters and that showed up in the Who is America series mm -hmm. where he, you know, you should really just go see it. I won't try to describe too much of it's it. It's indescribable. It's quite funny and, and uh, sometimes hard to watch but in a very compelling, compelling way. Um, and then uh, just, just before the uh, 2020 election, he came out with um, both Trial of Chicago 7 and uh, Borat's subsequent movie film as well as a really, really interesting film he did at the same time that's on Netflix called The Spy. Another true story about an Israeli man who eventually lost his life um, infiltrating the Syrian army uh, so that he could find out what they were doing uh, and how they were ready to attack Israel. Really, really an amazing performance that he produced and stars in. So he was doing that too, same time. Yeah. So if anything, we see where many uh, people featured at this festival have a great range. We see with Sasha Baron Cohen also mm. a great depth in great his character. Depth. Yeah. And but really, he is the master of exposing the ills of society and humbling the powerful. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. He's demonstrated that much for sure. Really appreciate yeah. him for that.
Yeah. And I appreciate you, Lynn. It's well, thank you, Journey. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. So I think that's uh, our recap for this evening with Sasha Baron Cohen. Please check it out. Uh, you can go to sbiff.org to see the films they have available, the interviews they do with uh, various awardees. Uh, is that the right word, awardees? I guess people they give be, awards to. People we'll they say give that. awards yeah. to. Yes, and, people uh, they award. Yes, there we go. People they award. And, that would uh, be a verb. That would, yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not going <laughs> to go there too much. But, but in any event, if you've enjoyed this and you feel like it, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. And um, thank you, Lynn. Oh, it's my pleasure. And we'll see you again tomorrow night. See you soon.